In this video, I'm going to take a look at emulation and virtualization options available for macOS. I've been using Parallels for a couple of years now, primarily for running Windows virtual machines, but occasionally for Linux virtual machines too. I mostly use it for running games, but also the occasional niche application that is Windows only and similar with Linux but primarily for testing there. There are many other long-standing options available for running virtual machines on macOS, including VirtualBox, Quemu, however you pronounce it, and VMware Fusion. But recent changes in macOS have made virtualizing Linux and macOS virtual machines, again, primarily for testing, a lot easier. So I wanted to take a look at these inspired by a post from the ever insightful Eclectic Light Company. And you'll also find that I did an entire short video on Virtual Buddy, which is one of the options I'm going to look at again in this roundup. I am intentionally excluding anything that runs containers from this video, just because that's a whole other world. It's a very valid world. It has its own use cases. I am primarily looking at something that lets me run graphical, visual user interface type virtual machines. So with all that said, let's get stuck in. Before we go any further, it's probably worth looking at what the difference between virtualization and emulation is. And I realize that probably during this video, I will interchangeably use them accidentally because it's quite easy to think of them as the same thing, but they are not. Virtualization actually runs in something called a hypervisor on top of your current CPU. This means it runs the virtual machine actually on the CPU and is much more efficient and much more performant, but it does mean it can only run virtual machines that use the same CPU architecture. Most modern CPUs and operating systems support this, and it is of course the far best option if it's an option for you, but if you want to run Intel virtual machines, you can only do this on an Intel machine. If you want to run ARM virtual machines, you have to do this on an ARM CPU, etc., etc. Emulation is the opposite. It runs any CPU architecture, but runs it in software on top of your current CPU. This means your options are limitless. You can run very obscure old CPUs. You can run modern CPUs, but because it's running in software, it's not going to be as efficient. For many cases of emulation where, for example, the most common is running an old 8-bit or 16-bit video game console on a modern CPU, the performance hit is not really going to be noticeable. But if you're trying to emulate a modern Intel CPU, on, for example, a modern Apple Silicon CPU, you will have problems. VirtualBox. VirtualBox is one of the classic virtualization options. It supports a lot of host operating systems and it's open source, but it's owned and maintained by Oracle, which not everybody likes Oracle's open source approaches, but there you go. There are binaries you can download and also a homebrew formula, but that does install a kernel extension. So in either option, you will need to restart after installation. The big, the very big caveat is that VirtualBox is Intel only and it describes itself not as a CP emulator. So they will never be Apple Silicon native, not even using Rosetta 2. I did use it extensively in the past, especially with Vagrant, when it used to be the most popular kind of Vagrant backend, but I can no longer test it on my M1 MacBook Pro, so I can't include it in this roundup, I'm afraid, but it's pretty well known and there's a lot of other content out there about it, so go and take a look. Parallels. So I first got into Parallels because at a press event, I was given one year's free, then they sucked me in and I've renewed it every year since. <laughs> there is a homebrew formula available, but I did find it a little unreliable, so you're probably better off just using the official disk image and the update mechanism it has. I think this is because there's a lot of you know, behind the scenes extensions and things like that. It uses that, um, they're easier done its sort of official way. Parallels runs on Chrome OS and Mac OS and largely labels itself as a Windows emulation option, which it does very well, which we'll come to in a minute, but it does actually support many other operating systems, including pre-bundled versions of Ubuntu, Debian, and several others. And I have got uh, Manjaro, Arch, and FreeBSD all working on it in the past as well. You can also use it as a 
vagrant and um, mini cube back end, but that requires a little bit of fiddling, especially now with on Apple Silicon machines. I mostly use it for running Windows 11, which it does pretty well and pretty performantly actually. I've had it running fairly complicated games, including Divinity Original Sin, Civilization VI, Age of Empires III, I think. So not the newest games, but fairly intense games. And you get a little bit of overhead, but not much. And actually, I have been running Divinity Original Sin now natively on my Mac, and it's basically about the same. So Parallels has done a very good job of mapping native Windows and Mac OS graphics libraries and drivers together, and it runs pretty well. It also supports a lot of other nice integration options, including shared folders, sidecar support, almost seamless device sharing, and a lot of other options. And many of these are also available with some of their pre-bundled Linux options like Ubuntu as well. Not quite as many, but nearly as many. If you can afford Parallels and it's about $99 a year, it's probably one of the best options for running VMs on the Mac, but it isn't open source and has some Russian connections, sort of loose in the past, if either of those aspects are a concern to you. So to create a machine, you can pick from the pre-configured options here, like Ubuntu. This is actually quite cool because it gets the ISO image you will need and even has integration scripts. So it will set up user accounts, et cetera, et cetera, all in the background for you. So once it's done, you're just taken to a password reset screen and you're pretty much ready to go. On initial launch, you will be prompted to install the Parallel Tools, which enables some of its custom features, uh, making it better integrated with macOS. Always advisable you do that. Uh, they also get updated when Parallels is updated and when there are big changes to Ubuntu too. You'll see even before it's installed and you typically have to restart to get the full benefits, you'll see that some of the features start becoming available almost immediately, but the rest after you've restarted. The process for installing Windows is much the same, so I won't go through the process here. You can select it from the virtual image library. Then after you've set up the parallel tools and got access to the full integration, you can just boot up the machine. It runs fairly performantly as well. You can see here I've got my shared files, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, you can create new folders. And this will show up on the Mac desktop as well. Here I'm going to try running a game. This is a Gloomhaven game, relatively recent game, not the highest quality graphics, but reasonably high. Looking at Activity Monitor, you can see that it's having actually reasonably moderate impact on the machine. There's very little, on my machine anyway, there's very little fan noise or heat, but the CPU obviously will fire up a bit, but that's the same if you run a game natively, to be honest with you. Parallels also has this concept of configure for, these sort of default profiles you can switch for your use. They're not uh, mandatory, they, they just kind of give you performance improvements and optimizations for the purpose, whether that be uh, spreadsheets or games, for example. And here, you can now see that the game is running in windowed glory. I could also go full screen, of course. Next are two options from Howard Oakley of the Eclectic Light Company, which is a fascinating blog and resource for all things deep on the Mac OS and operating systems and uh, processor discussions, etc., etc. I have read many, many articles there and love them all. And he has two applications, which are kind of, I suppose, technical experiments showing you how to exploit certain features of Mac OS that are possible for developers. They tend to have quite simple interfaces, but they work very to the metal. One is Viable, which is for running Mac virtual machines, and one is Live Viable for running Linux virtual machines, which you need Ventura for. Once you have them running, they are both fairly simple. They don't offer lots of the bells and whistles of some of the commercial tools like shared folders and drag and drop and clipboards and all this sorts of thing, but for cheap, for free, 
easy ways of getting virtual machines up and running for testing. They are perfect. First, let's look at Viable. There's two ways to start a machine here. You can download a disk image, which will take a while from Apple, or you can install a disk image from a location you already have access to, one you have downloaded locally. Once that's done, and that can take a little bit of time, so make sure that you see the finished or succeeded message before you do it. You can change some configuration settings for the virtual machine and then click Start. It will ask you to pick that image you downloaded, wait a little bit of time, resize the window, and off we go. There is the Mac virtual machine running. And as always, you need to go through that setup process, which is possibly an excuse for having your own custom images, so you can skip this all the time. I don't know how that's possible, but I'm sure it is. And once you've done that, and you can just skip through as many steps as possible, voila, you have a Mac virtual machine. Liveable is a little bit simpler, actually, but you need to acquire a disk image for an ARM distribution of Linux first. Uh, actually recommends Fedora, which seems to work best. So you download that, click the install button, find the ISO. This then creates the virtual machine bundle. And then it starts. You will see this weird screen to begin with. If you just hit enter, that gets rid of it. I don't exactly know what the message is. And then you'll get lots more text on the screen, which is mostly readable as opposed to the uh, completely unreadable. And very quickly, in fact, quicker than macOS, we get to the try or install steps. And we have a Linux virtual machine running pretty quickly much quicker than doing it with parallels, but of course you don't get all those extra features. The internet does work. This is one thing that is working on both Liveable and Viable. You get shared internet resources, which is probably the most important thing you need. Terminal works as you would expect. And then when we're done, we can just shut down. Next is Virtual OS. This is on GitHub, but also on the Apple App Store. It doesn't look like it's had a massive amount of activity, but as the code is there, it's possibly good to dig into and learn how it was built. It's very simple to use. You install it, you open the settings, you check whether you want to download the latest image from Apple or pick an image you have locally, then you hit start. And that's about it. <laughs> so very simple, very straightforward, no settings, possibly more of a proof of concept if you want to dig into the code to see how it all works. Enjoy. UTM is increasingly popular the past couple of years. It's actually a wrapper around Quemu. So if you can't get to grips with all the command line options of Quemu, you can use UTM to make it a little bit easier. It is one of the interesting ones because much like Quemu, it can run ARM64 versions, so it can virtualize, but it can also run Intel and every other processor you can think of, and probably a few you never thought of as well, so it can also emulate. Of course, if you're emulating, then you'll get a bit of a performance hit, especially if you're trying to emulate, say, a modern Intel-based PC, but it is possible. I was able to get Intel versions of Linux and Windows running, but they were so slow, basically unusable, but it is possible. And maybe if you try a command line version without a GUI, it will work easier. It is fully open source. So if you like messing around with operating systems and it has a fairly vibrant community that you can get involved with, then Take a look. So for ARM versions of Linux, it's relatively easy. You find an ISO image. That's probably the harder part. There's a limited amount of those available, but they are available. Download the ISO, select virtualization, then Linux, select the image, and then continue. Set the, the memory, the CPU, the hard drive, etc., etc. What do you think you might need? Anything else you might want? Click the big old play button. And then very quickly, you should be greeted by whatever onboarding process the operating system you've installed has. So in this case, I have picked Fedora. And after a little bit of time, up pops the live installer that lets me either try or install to hard drive. And the 
it works pretty much as you would expect. For Intel versions of Linux, then instead of virtualize, you would select emulate. And you can see there that I have picked the Intel processor architecture. And now just to show you, I click try and wait and wait and wait and wait. I won't finish this, this screen recording, but I did see how long it did take. I went away, I came back sometime later and it got to the next stage. So it's slow. I can't really say how slow, but it's very slow. So probably not usable, but it is possible. For ARM versions of Windows, there is a disk image available on the Insiders program and some other places, or a VHDX file, not an ISO as Windows calls it. In the UTM settings, you can set it to convert a VHDX image to an ISO, or you can also use the Quemu command line to do that for you and sort of skip that process. It takes uh, less time in the UTM window. And then once it's done, and you can also see it's installing the guest additions in the background there, wait, and you get to the boot options. This works to a point, but you'll have problems with the network because the SPICE tools, what UTM refers to as these kind of guest editions, is not installed yet. You can do this manually by hitting Shift and F10, and this opens up the terminal, and you change to the drive and run SPICE tools installer. Wait for that to finish. Reboot. But actually, before you reboot, it's better to shut down because we actually want to change what is used for the networking options to, instead of shared network, to bridged. Save that and then restart the VM and we should be able to get to the next steps. The fact it's now checking for updates is a good sign and the Windows installation process takes quite a bit of time. So I've cut a lot of it here, but once everything is done, get to the Windows desktop, whatever Windows calls it, and you're good to go. VMware is a company that is infamous for its main business being virtual machines. So I don't know why I've never thought about using anything they offer for virtualizing on Mac OS. They do have an application, it's called Fusion. It's pretty similar to Parallels, and again, largely aims itself in the market as a Windows emulator or Windows virtualizer uh, for Mac OS and other operating systems. Also similar to Parallels, it does offer a lot of tighter integration with the host operating system, including mappings between the graphics libraries, shared libraries, um, shared folders, and all these sorts of features that we've covered earlier. Interestingly, you can also use it to run containers, so it becomes kind of an interesting multi-purpose tool if you're into that sort of thing. The commercial released version of Fusion is still Intel only, but there is a tech preview that runs on ARM-based Macs, and that's what I took for a spin. So for Fusion and using ARM versions of Linux, again, it's a matter of finding one that works. I'm using the suggested one here, which is Photon, which is VMware's own version. Install the ISO. This doesn't have a GUI, so it's be quite a quick install and not that much to look at, but we get the point. Boot it up. There's the splash screen, install, and here's the install steps. I won't go through the whole installation process, but you get the point. And once that's done, you can reboot to the command line in this case and use Linux. Um, but any of the ones with a GUI should work. Have a look at the testing guide here for Fusion. It is still in preview and it has less things that work than Parallels and UTM right now. For Fusion with Windows on ARM, you do need, again, to convert the VHDX file. It will not do that for you automatically, like with UTM. So you need to run this Quemu command, which I have got on the screen right now. Once you've done that, you can set up the machine, pick that image, finish the setup. You have some settings here looking very much like old fashioned macOS settings and 
We can now get to the installation process. Again, I'm cutting quite a bit of this because the Windows installation process is quite slow and quite long. And much like UTM, we will get to a certain point where the network doesn't work and we do something similar, but for the Fusion's all equivalent. So again, hit Shift F10, up comes permissions and the terminal. We get to the virtual drive, the CD drive, set certain uh, PowerShell permissions. It's a world I don't really understand. It's all in this testing guide. You can find the instructions there. And then run the setup process. When it's done, it flashes here. This is obviously some sort of graphics driver thing. It's changing. And then you can continue. And again, cutting a lot of the process here. But once we hit the check for update section, we can be confident we have a network connection. Jump through the remainders of the steps. And finally, we have Windows. Woo!